Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad Wa ala alayhi wa sahbihi wa sallam Continue on in our study of hadith This is the 8th hadith And this is hadith which uh, illustrates for us Or the shahid of the hadith Is that we should not cheat others Very very important Islam forbids that and if we only practice that as leaders, and if we only practice that as uh, people who are governed, and if we only practice that as believers, our societies would be so much better off because so many people oppress one another and cheat one another and steal one another. And I was just reading about, uh, for example, Nigeria, the corruption there and the corruption in the pipelines because people cheat and people deceive and people are corrupt and they steal. So those are un-Islamic values. Never cheat, never steal. And the Prophet ﷺ forbade it strictly in this hadith, illustrates this for us. An Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala an. Anna Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam marra fi suq ala hubrati ta'am fa adkhala yadahu fiha fa nalat asabi'uhu balalat أو بللا فقال ما هذا يا صاحب التعام قال يا رسول الله أصابته السماء قال أفلا جعلته فوق طعامي حتى يراه الناس وقال من غشنا فليس منا رواه مسلم وترمذي وأبو داود uh, it is reported on the authority of Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu that Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed by a pile, uh, a person with uh, food and stuck his hand into the food. His fingers encountered wetness and he said, what is this, O owner of the food? The man said, O messenger of Allah, rain fell on it or it rained. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then asked, why did you not put it on the top so that the people might see it, meaning the wet food. Why wasn't the, the wet food was inside? Then he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, added, whoever cheats us is not one of us. Because the man, it appears that he was trying to deceive the people. That by putting the wet food, the, when, when you wet your vegetables, if they weigh vegetables, it's gonna weigh heavier. If they put water on the, on the things that you weigh, it's going to be much heavier than if it was dry. So the man had placed the, the rained upon food. It could have been either from weight or it could have been maybe spoiled or not as, uh, not as good a quality as the dry food. So this was uh, a type of deception. And one of the things that makes buying and selling or selling uh, haram one is riba, you know, doing uh, interest, and there's different types of interest. One is called al-gharar, al-gharar meaning that it is uh, cheating or deception. And then also the third thing is dhul, is any type of transaction that involves oppression or, uh, or cheating or interest. These are all haram, that nullifies the contract of selling. So in this hadith, Abu Huraira informs us uh, that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was walking in the market uh, and Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala informed him, meaning giving him wahi, giving him uh, revelation, that a certain trader was deceiving his customers in the sulk. So he went to his place of business, stuck his hand deep in the pile of wheat belonging to him and found that the grain was wet inside. He asked the man about this, he replied that it, it had been spoiled by the rain. So the food, because it was wheat, it was all wet. And wheat, you know how it would get if it gets wet. It's soggy, it, it's not as uh, nice. So the Prophet ﷺ asked him why he had uh, not put the wet stuff on the top so that his customer might see what they were buying. He then informed the trader that those, uh, that those who were nearby, that such behavior was cheating and that those who cheat their Muslim brothers and sisters are lacking in Iman, and that's good explanation. So the Prophet ﷺ said, uh, Man Whoever deceives us is not from us. It's very important. Many There's many ahadith 
like this, and these are hadith of wa'id. They show that this action is a major sin, and that uh, so the one who does this, they've fallen into a major sin by cheating. The Prophet said, is is minna. That means he's not from us. Some people will understand that meaning he's not from the Muslims. That does not mean he has no iman. But it just is a, a very stern warning, and it means his iman is weak. Man ghashina falaysa minna. Doesn't mean he's a disbeliever now. No, it means for this sin, he has deviated from the Muslims. He's deviated from righteousness, okay, which is halal business and doing khayr. Some of the benefits of this hadith, it shows the obligation of, uh, of people to do honest business, to be righteous in their conduct and be honest, and that this is the characteristic of the mu'mineen, of the believers, that they're honest in their business. Another benefit of this hadith is, sh is it shows that there is a sin when we hide and deceive when we're selling. So for example, if I say I'm gonna sell my computer, my laptop to someone, secondhand, or my bookshelf, or whatever, this chair, and I say, well, you know, there is some scratches in it, like this. And I say, but I'm not going to tell them because, you know, I don't want to get less money for it. So I try to deceive them. You know, and I, I only show them this, this side of it. I take a picture, show them one side, and then they see it and they say, oh, that's a beautiful chair. I want it and I'll pay the full price. So this could this would be a type of deception because I have to let them know the aib, the, uh, the thing that... Uh, the defect in the the merchandise or it'll be a sin uh, the other benefit of this hadith is it shows it's an obligation it's wajib to be honest in your business transactions and of course to be honest in general as a believer also this hadith shows us the permissibility of exposing someone when they are cheating and this will discourage others from cheating. And this is a type of emirbi ma'ruf and na'in amunkar. This is a type of uh, commanding the good and forbidding the evil. Because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, qala sami'tu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, yaqoo, min ra'a minkum munkaran fali yugayru biyan. Whoever sees a munkar, then change it with his hands. Fa'in lam yastati' in this hadith in Sahih Muslim, the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever sees a munkar, whoever sees something haram, whoever sees something bad, then change it with his hands, I mean change it physically, if you're able to do so. And if you're not able to do so, then change it with your tongue, meaning speak out against that wrong. And if you're unable to do that, then change it with your heart, and that's the weakest form of Iman. How do you change it with your heart? You change it with your heart by hating that evil in your heart. If you see someone drinking alcohol, but you know that if you take the alcohol from him, it's going to cause a big problem. He's going to fight you and harm you. Or you don't have the right. You're in a non-Muslim society where alcohol is lawful under the law there. So people can do that. So you don't have the right to take that physically and destroy that bottle. You may be hurt by the person, maybe you go to jail for taking someone's property, all kind of harm. The harm is greater than the good of removing the munkah. Al-maslaha wa mafsid, which we'll study later. The harms and the benefits. And many things in Islam, you have to look at the harms and the benefits. So you don't have the right, you can't, but you can, instead, maybe you can advise that person, you say, oh, so-and-so, especially if they're a Muslim. You shouldn't drink alcohol. Alcohol is haram. Alcohol is poisoning you. It's bad for your kidneys. It's bad for your liver. It causes all kind of illnesses. It causes your intellect to, to go, especially when you're drunk. You don't know what you're saying. You don't know what you're doing. You can advise them. But if you're afraid that even advising them might be harmful, that they're a person who likes to fight, they're a person, uh, whatever the case may be, then you can at least hate that in your heart. You just say, in your heart, you just say, I, I can't stand that and I wish they would stop that. Oh Allah, please guide them. Oh Allah, you know, you say this in your heart, maybe you make dua for them. So this is the weakest form of Iman. But all of those things 
are a part of Iman. The fact that you change, you do something with your hand, a good deed, or pro prohibit a bad deed with your hand, this is, a, this is a, a good deed, and this is Iman. If you do something, you speak out on it, you speak something good, or you speak out against something evil, this is also a part of Iman. If you, uh, whatever Iman, the things that you have in your heart, this is a part of Iman. That's very important. That shows us a very important principle of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah is that Iman is in three parts. What are the three parts, Rashad? Iman is where? Where is Iman? I just even told you. Nah. Even though that's a part of Iman, but. Uh, where, where, where do we find Iman? In the heart? Okay, and on our, our limbs, you could say on our limbs, and our tongue. All of those are part of Iman. Ahlul Sunnah believes that Iman is statements of the tongue. It is, actually what's beautiful is the way they describe it in Arabic when you hear the ulama speak about it. They say, uh, Al Iman, Amal uh, amala Qalb, وَعَمَلَ جَوَارِحِ وَعَمَلَ لِسَانِ So they describe it as deeds. Deeds of the hand. You know, an action. If you remove something harmful in the road, that's a part of Iman. Deeds of the tongue. When you speak out, when you speak the shahada, or you say something good to someone, this is a part of Iman. You smile at someone, that's a physical part. Or deeds of the heart. Meaning, when you tawakkal ala Allah, you put your trust in Allah. You have Iman in the six pillars of Iman and everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed and everything that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. All of that is from Iman. And those are actions of the heart. They call that amal al Actually, those are actions of the heart. Tawakkal is an action of the heart. When we make salat, that is an action of the heart because it involves your, your ikhlas and it's an action on the, the limbs because you, you make takbir and you physically uh, uh, prostrate and all those other actions and it's you make dhikr with your tongue and you read al-fatiha all of that in salat you have all those aspects of iman Another last benefit of this hadith is that nothing is hidden from Allah, the exalted, subhana. And this also has, this hadith is also evidence and dalil that the Prophet wasallam was getting revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that's how he knew to put his hand in that particular trader's uh, food items that he was selling. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.